Ironically, for the building which inspired the whole modern Manchester city centre skyscape, the Hacienda is no longer with us. Reduced to rubble several years ago, it has now been rebuilt with a building which totally replicates its familiar curved shape on Whitmer Street. Back in the early 80s, the club, which was placed into an old yachting warehouse, was considered somewhat a white elephant, a New York-style super club in Manchester. Who would have thought such a thing could work? It's even its position was looked on as being strange. Somewhere between Hume, where the bulk of its audience came from, and 500 yards from the city centre, it was in a no-man's land. These days, that's in the middle of a huge conurbation, as Manchester, inspired and empowered by the Hacienda, has grown somewhat since then. In the 19th century, Manchester was the world's first post-industrial city, underlined by its endless mills. Sadly, this declined and became the world's first post-industrial city, with a familiar decay of the 60s, 70s and 80s. This trend is reversed by the vision of the Hacienda and the way it inspired the city to go forward. And arguably, that building, factory records, on the whole that music scene, turned Manchester into the world's first post-punk city. So here we are at the back of the old Hacienda. It's actually a new building built in the same shape as Hacienda, but built on top of it. In the background, the gleaming new towers of Manchester, in a sense built in the model of the gleaming old towers of Manchester, the Hacienda, which seemed like a folly at the time when it was built here, a whole 500 metres away from the city centre. That way, that way was going out to the Badlands, nothing happened down there. Along the wall here was an interesting sort of sculpture with names of some key moments, some of them quite interesting, some of them are not what you would expect. 1985, I stood in the Neubarten band after attacking cast iron columns with the Umati drill. I was there, great night, saw them play there a couple of times. Next to that, the Stone Roses, March 89, classic gig. Then the Associates, Billy Kenzie, one of the greatest things of all time. And in between the two, the Pogues. We did up before the Hacienda went Acid House, it was one of the great venues in town, along with the international one and international two. Let's not rewrite history completely. But there's a uh, great line of bands, 86, Erasure, Bad, Jesus and Mary Chain. The Jesus and Mary Chain's first night in here was when 84, they didn't play here, but I brought them here to come see Lee Scratch Perry because they come to my house to do an interview. Alan McGee brought them up there on the train for free because Alan used to work for British Rail and he got free tickets for the train. We went to the famous pub across the road. And Alan tried to make the Jesus and Mary Chain do the pub karaoke, but that's very unlikely. Not very karaoke kind of guys, which is their strength. Uh, next down here, Five Figure Loss, not the name of a night or a club or a band, but an actual business model. Then Zumba Nights, DJ Graham Park, DJ Mike Pickery, two key uh, DJ for so There's a lot of great DJs at the house center. My Pickering was uh, booked all the bands. He also um, booked a lot of the club nights. Probably the key creative force, Grey Park, great DJ, and top fella as well. Then it was Manchester in 1989, famous times when people, we'd all go to Hacienda, people were spilling out here onto this, by the canal, where the pusher lurks. And this is the canal where you stand about two in the morning, on the way to probably to Hume for the 24, 48 hour parties, depending where your head was at. Also a little dedication there to Claire Layton, the girl who died in Hacienda from a uh, reaction to ecstasy. Uh, Great much please, George Carmen QC. Uh, Hacienda night one closed, a lot of problems, business problems, gangster problems. Flash night opens the last great night there probably. Factory records collapsed in 1992. Famously, not a great business model, but what a great catalogue. New Order, London Records, 10 years old. DJ's Boys Own, who DJed his way as well. The great Andy Weatherall. Just put up an old interview with Andy from 1990 I did in London. Fantastic DJ. I was thinking, in many ways, as he sat in between a, a dance DJ and John Peel. Groundbreaking, groundbreaking. Just like four. Then Kelly. 
resign, resign the iconic black and yellow stripes, which have become part and parcel of the look of the city. 96, flesh ends. 15th birthday party. Then, all cool things come to an end. Saturday, 28th June, 1997. The Hacienda closed, just the way Tony would have wanted it, in a sense. If Tony was here now, he probably, he probably would not grieve the fact that this is just a bunch of boring flats and not a club anymore. Always go forward. Manchester is never finished. Nice to get a view the other way around. Sometimes they'd open the back door and you would, we would spell out here, wouldn't we, if anyone remembers. And this canal, when this canal was a place you never saw another human being at all. Even in virus times, more people down there than there is now. Back behind me is the city centre. That's the back of the Hacienda, although technically it's not the Hacienda, it's a building built on top of where the Hacienda used to be. Uh, Manchester never stops. And there's the gleaming towers of the new Manchester. 